J.T. Crowley is talking books. On this show, you'll hear from emerging talent and seasoned veterans from around the world. Hello, I'm J.T. Crowley, and today I'm delighted to have on my show Matt Potosa from New York City to talk about his book, Broadway 2020, The Ghost Light Years. It's a book of photography of the empty theatres of New York Broadway, the theatre district, as 2020 lockdown forced their closure. The photographs themselves tell their own stories of what they looked like, all deserted, a far cry from the normal bustling scenes you would expect of busy Broadway, the theatre land of Manhattan, sit, Manhattan, New York City. Now you might wonder when you look at this book, how Matt got access to these theatres in lockdown? Well, a lot of that is down to the fact that he works in Manhattan's theatre land, as the guy at the stage door of the Winter Garden Theatre. So we kind of got the inside uh, hook here, everybody. And of course, he he's bound to know other stagehand doors from the other theatres. So I probably think he got a good um, phone them up and said, look, I'd like to do some photographs here, everybody. Um, can I come in and uh, take a um, few shots of the theatre? Pulled in a few um, favours, I would say. Um, so over the years, been, you know, when you're on the stage door at these theatres, you'll meet very famous actors. He has, he's meeting so very, very famous, some famous, some up and coming, and some coming towards the, how shall I say, the end of their theatrical careers. So let's have less of my waffle and let's invite Matt onto the show so they can talk about this beautiful book of his. It's a big book, everybody, but it's full of stunning, stunning, stunning photographs of New York's Broadway, the theatre land of New York City. Matt, come and join me. Hello, John. How are you? Thanks for that introduction. Oh, I, I spent ages working on it, as you can tell, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Now, Matt, before we uh, look at this book, which for me is full of your amazing photography work, would you tell the audience a little about, you know, who is Matt Potosa and why did you write this book? And why not so much write it, but why did you compile it with all these fabulous, fabulous photographs? Well, uh, I've always been a photographer here in New York for years and years. I come from Syracuse. And um, I found myself at this job. I took a night job as a, as a doorman. And um, suddenly the pandemic hit and a lot of theaters closed down, but they still need doormen to go let other people in and whatnot. And I found myself at different theaters at the stage door and it would be quiet. And I would just walk around and say, wow, look at this empty theater here. You know, might as well get some shots. You know, this is, you'll never see it like this again, you know? So, you know, few minutes, I'd go back, you know, this is the shot. Some of the sets are still up. So I try to walk around, you can't touch anything, you know? So I'd go in the back of the stage and get the shot from the back, get the whole theater in from the back of the stage, way, way backstage. And I would do the same thing, walk by the orchestra in the dark, just the house lights and just drink in the whole stage. And I would just do like a panorama photo you know, like six across and then put them back together. And it came out great. The lighting was excellent by itself. You, know? you, you must have thought um, it must be quite spooky doing it, you know, especially because the whole, you know, theories of the ghost lights on the stage. You know, I, I, to me, uh, an empty theatre could be quite eerie. Did you find it eerie when you were going around taking the photographs? <laughs> there are stories you know, about haunted houses and the ghost light. But um, I try not to think about that. But a few of the places I did go into, I was the only one there. And it's, you have to walk down some pretty dark alleys and there's some tricky doors and there's a lot of darkness, you know, until you find your way around. And then when you're way up in the mezzanine, let's say like the Belasco, which is the haunted theater, 
you just there to get the shot. You know, you don't start thinking about that. You can't think about those kind of things, you know. And if you do, sometimes I just start whistling, you know, let them know I'm there. You know, <laughs> a little whistle, <laughs> get the shot and get out, you know. <laughs> Now, Matt, you very kindly put a short uh, real clip together as it, when you look at this clip, everybody, which we're going to watch, it really does summarize Matt's work. It's absolutely stunning. On March 13th, 2020, the Great White Way went dark for nearly two years, impacting 100,000 theater employees from actors to stagehands and ushers. New York City without Broadway felt empty indeed. The shutdown was unprecedented. Broadway had stayed open through the Spanish flu of 1812, two world wars, and had only closed down once before, two days after the September 11th attacks. The curtain fell on the longest shutdown in theatrical history. The only shining light that remained was the ghost light on each stage of every house. A beacon of hope in the tradition of the show must go on. These photographs represent those dark days. How good was that, everybody? It, it really was, as you can see why I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. Now, Matt, you've put a plethora of stunning photographs in this book that depicts the empty theatres and surrounding areas of Broadway, the theatre land of Manhattan, New York. And, you know, all done during the deserted times of 2020, all due to lockdown, a year none of us will forget. Now, Matt and I are not going to talk about all the photographs in his book, because there's an awful lot of them, as this is not the idea of the interview. The idea is to give you um, an insight, a glimpse as to what the book is about. So we have chosen a sample of photographs to talk about, or probably more, I shall fair enough to say that Matt has chosen um, a sample of his photographic works, and we're going to do 10 of them. So... But if you want to know more about them and more about this book, then you can go to Matt's um, web pages and there you can get the book and there you can see all about the history of the photographs. And also you can click the Amazon link below and get the book there. Let's go to the first photograph, uh, Matt, that you chose. And I agree to, to go ahead with everybody. <laughs> It is. It's the first photograph is of the 7th Avenue looking north, taken from West 44th Street. It's a picture, photograph, taken at the street view three days after Broadway was shut down due to COVID-19. So, Matt, when I look at this stunning photograph here of 7th Avenue, it's Times Square. What is this photograph's story? What is it telling us? Please tell us. Well, it's a unique view of Times Square. I uh, rode my bike down there and I was videotaping with the GoPro just because there was nothing, there was no traffic. And I went down by the theaters and went down by the theater I was working at. And you could actually hear the birds in the street. It was that quiet. And I just parked the bike against a, a street sign and says, geez, I gotta get this shot here. You'll never see this again, you know? So I did, you know, just stood in the middle, checked behind me, always checked for cars. There's nothing there. So I had my time. I just did a sweeping view, maybe six or seven across, six or seven across the top. Nobody there. Dead quiet. And you managed yeah, to get with a blue sky. Yeah. yeah, that's lucky. You get lucky. You know, you've got a blue sky and you've got the yellow lights, um, the electric lights, and you've got um, a whole raft of things, and then you've got you know, the Times Square, you're looking straight down it. It's a stunning photograph. Are you proud of it? I think it? one of the billboards actually says something like, you know, thanks for, you know, doing all you can during the pandemic. So there's some, you know, that that's there too. It's It describes the time, you know. It does. It does. But I'm not going to give it away, everybody. Go and have a look for yourselves. 
Mm. Now, Matt, let's explore um, more of this wonderful photographic book of yours. As I says, he's got it on the store there, everybody. Now, the second of the 10 photographs that have been chosen is 7th Avenue, Looking South. And if you look closely, you'll see a last man standing. Now, who is this guy? Why did you take this shot? So what is the story telling us here, Matt? What did you capture here? The uh, fellow with his back to you in the guitar, I think he's known as the Naked Cowboy in the Tidy Whities there. And he's actually a really nice guy, you know, friendly, smart. And he's out there, it's like 35 degrees. And I was just shocked. I go, my God, this guy's still here playing by himself. He was talking to me, we talked a bit. Can I take your picture? Yeah. Well, I don't know if he saw me take that picture. Then we talked afterwards. But just to see him there, still like representing, you know, Times Square area, still playing, you know, it's amazing. And just the emptiness too. I had to, you had to capture that, you know. It is. It's an empty scene because I'm looking at it here on my phone, everybody. And he's there on the corner. Uh, probably just in a, a United States um, trunks. Uh, tidy whities we call them, like Fruit of the Loom, you know, standard, you know. <laughs> ah. And of course, yes, again, it's looking down to um, the fabulous streets of New York, everybody. Now, let's go, because that's a little bit to give you of what the, the surrounding areas were like, everybody. So let's go to some of the theatres that Matt has chosen. Um, now, the photographs of the Schoenfeld Theatre are very interesting. I understand that perhaps I should say the Gerald Schoenfeld Theatre from, uh, which was formerly known as the, the Plymouth Theatre. It's on 236 West 45th Street in the Theatre District of Midtown Manhattan. It opened in 1917 on October the 10th to be precise. The theatre was designed by Herbert J. Crapp and built for the Schubert brothers. The theatre is named for Gerald Schoenfeld, a longtime president of the Schubert organisation. It has just undergone, it has about 1,100 seats, everybody, across two levels, and the facade and the auditorium are New York City landmarks. And when I say New York City landmarks, they have to be designated as a landmark by the local uh, planning authorities, I believe. So not every theatre gets a landmark, but once you get one, it's quite you know, famous. So my question to you, Matt, is, why did you choose this theatre to be placed, mentioned in your book? And why did you take the shots from the back of the theatre for one of them, and the other from the back of the stage. Look into the auditorium. Now, I know you've got your book there, and I think you want to show the photograph. <laughs> Come on, show us the uh, photograph. Well, here's the, it's, it's a big book. So when you open it up, it's got, you know, it goes, it's pretty wide without being too distorted. And naturally, I want to see everything from the theater. I want to see as, as much theater as I can. So normally you go like 10 rows back or even 20 at the back of the orchestra. And uh, I believe it's just, it's only lit by the ghost light, very little lighting there, but the reflection or the, you can see through the plastic on the seats. And it's like, I think that the plastic actually looks like the, uh, the missing audience, you know, they represent the audience there. And you can see some of the sets still up there from come from away. And, um, I think first I did the backstage one because the tables and chairs are still there. They are still there. So, so this is like, a, you know, something stopped. It's just the, the, the plug was pulled, you know? So I had to get that, you know, drink it all in. So, you know, I have to say, Matt, the lighting is fantastic. Well, if you do the right exposure and, and, and drink the shadows, then you have to get it all or else it'll just be blackness. You know, you need to see what's in those shadows. You know, 
So, you know, I yeah. try to get that. Yeah, I fully understand. There's a photograph and there's a photograph. Yeah. There is and a most of them are composites too. So it's not one photograph blown up. They're, they're assembled. And then and straightened up and, and presented in, in a wide format. Yes, I love the table scene there. You know, that you can see the lights, and you can see the um, you've captured the floorboards. You know, in where they were worn out and where they've been polished, and you know the reflection. Right. That, it's just stunning. Yeah, yeah, it's painted to look like that. You know. Yeah. Now. Let's talk about some more of your highly creative photographs. Um, I want to go now to the Schubert Theatre. Of course, we've done the uh, Schoenfeld. That's the, the pictures of the auditorium there. And he's got the picture from the back of the stage, everybody. So let's go to the Schubert Theatre, which is 225 West 44th Street in the Theatre District of Manhattan. Now, this theatre is slightly older than the Schoenfeld, having opened in October 1913, and is larger with a seating capacity of about 1,500. Again, the photographs are taken from the ground level at the back of the auditorium and the back of the stage, looking out towards the audience. So, Matt, what's the story behind these two photographs for me? Because for me, they capture the spirit of the place. And that's what a good photographer does, captures the spirit of what's in the, the take, the shot. Yeah, yeah. I, it's one of my favorites. Is This is from way, way back, way upstage, when the music, uh, the um, Kill a Mockingbird. Yes. I almost got my there. back against the theater there so I could get everything, all the sets, you know, that are there. And you can see up to the ceiling where everything comes down. Everything is, is hoisted up into the ceiling like a vertical filing cabinet. You know, row after row after row, it all comes down. And you can see everything from the sides, the top, the bottom. I like to encompass it all. So th that picture is like a frame within a frame within another frame. And the, um, and the colors and the textures are pretty, pretty intense, you know. And then the, the reverse angle with all the lights hanging in there. Mm. I think all those lights look like crows hanging on a line, like a bird. There's just so much going on. And I've showed it to a few of the uh, lighting guys and engineers. They love to see their work. You know, they go, oh, those are my lights. Those are my speakers, you know. So the tech guys <laughs> really like that. It encompasses everything, you know. Do you know what I get from your photos, Matt? I get a sense of the history of the place. Well, thank you. That's what I get when I look at these photographs, you know, from the auditorium and from the backstage. And when I look at the backstage ones, Matt, you know, I'm often thinking, who's tread those boards, you know? Because these yeah, uh, theatres, yeah, these theatres are quite old. So there must be a lot of people, you know, of all fame walked those boards. From Al Jolson, Barbara Streisand, you know. Uh, not to a, mention a, um, your friend, Mr. Hugh Jackson. Hugh Jackson. Jackson. Sorry. We all call him Jack Jackson just as a joke, you know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful fellow. Wonderful fellow. Now, <clears throat> I have to say, um, for me, um, you know, when I look at, I believe the Belasco Theatre is probably one of the most haunted theatres in New York City, in, you know, the theatre district. And Ooh. the Belasco <laughs> Theatre, oh, very good. He's just gone boo everyone, yeah, very funny. <laughs> you should see us doing this, uh, setting these interviews up over the last couple of weeks, everybody. We've had a laugh. And I'm not going any more than that. <laughs> Listen, you can, it's easy to scare yourself. I've done it. You know, every night when I shut the house lights out, you know, across the stage, it goes dark. And if you stand there, if you just stand there for a few minutes and listen, you're going to hear things in the old building. You're going to hear water tanks. You're going to hear creaking. 
You can even hear a voice if you stand there long enough. So just hit the lights, give a little whistle and walk away. <laughs> just to tell the ghosts, I'm here, go away. Don't bother me tonight. Yeah, working here, I'm working. Yeah. Now, in your book, you take us to, as I says, the, another theatre, the Belasco Theatre. And again, the photos are taken from the back of the stage, looking out and from the back of the auditorium. But this time you've taken it not from the stalls or down at level one, the ground floor. You've taken this from the mezzanine floor. Now, this theatre, like all the theatres in Broadway, the Theatre District of Midtown Manhattan has a history to it. It opened on the 16th of October, 1907. It was developed by Mayor R. Bimberg and operated by David Belasco. And I believe it was probably formerly known as the Stuyvesant Theatre and until Belasco named it in 1910. It's undergone, like most of New York's theatre land, numerous renovations. What's this theatre to you? Does it have a special place in your heart? And what are the photos telling us about the ambience and the wonderful scenery, the history, the essence of this theatre? Uh, it was one of my favourite theatres. I think it's one of the most beautiful theatres. The ceiling is Tiffany, Tiffany Lights. And I got lucky because it was a girl from the North Country was still there with the beautiful floor. And it's just, look at the orangey, orangey colors in there from, that's from way up at the Mez, you know? And then there's the opposite view. You can still see the drum set and the keyboards, everything's just stopped, you know? And it's, the colors were so lush there. That's just house lights. You know, there's no extra lighting in there and the ghost light shines through. And it's yeah, just, I, I just think it's just, you know, oh, it, best. It, it's fabulous. Theater, you know? And, you know, and of course, you know, the shot that you've taken from the back of the stage, looking out to the auditorium, and there in the middle is the ghost light. In the, yeah, almost in the middle of the picture. It's stunning. Do you want to hold it up stunning. again so that we can have a look? You're dead center. Yeah, it's dead center. It's dead center. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I it, like the bullseye. I like the bullseye, you know. Jasper Johns, you know? Yeah, it's absolutely uh, stunning, everybody. Now, you see, we can go on all about these theatres, but the whole idea of this book is for you to go and get it and look about the theatres through the eyes of Matt Potosa's photography, all done through lockdown 2020. And you'll see in all the, a lot of the photographs, the ghost lights. Yeah, of course, the ghost lights are there because they are representing hope for the future. You know that the shows will eventually come back. I'm right, aren't I? Well, it's also if you're the last guy there and you're walking around, you don't fall into the orchestra pit. You got to have a light there to see where the stage ends and the seats begin. <laughs> There's a safety reason, and the, and the fire chief wants to walk in there and, and point his flashlight from the front and just see all the way to the back. If there's no lights, you know, you can't see smoke. Now, when you're in like a place like, we didn't talk about this one, but there's details. If you look straight up to the ceiling, it's a double page. Yeah. You'll never see, it doesn't look like that. It's, it's dark, but it's the details of some of the architectural in the, on the interior is amazing, you know? Oh, they're stunning. They're st absolutely stunning. And when you look at, as I said, everybody, there's no end of these photographs in this book. The theatre... Well, it ends eventually. It's only 133 pages, you know. But you can take your time with it. Oh, yeah. But I say to you, just enjoy the photography, everybody. Just enjoy the pictures and what they're telling you about the theatre land of Broadway, New York. Now, let's move on to the majestic theatre, Matt. And for me... <laughs> Your photograph captures the grandeur of the place, giving it a character of another world, the world of drama. And you can almost hear the audience, the orchestra playing, the actors throwing their voices so that at the back they could be heard. As we've already said, 
the architecture for some of these theatres is absolutely phenomenal. And the architecture here is interesting. And the way you have set up the lighting here is very, very clever. So talk us through this picture, the Majestic Theatre. Right. Um, there's no setup lighting. It is what it is there. And when you do a, a, a longer exposure at the Majestic, look at the proscenium there with the chandelier. Now that's closed now. That's that's not no longer there. They took it all down. And there's with the house lights, which is different. The seats are more prominent there. But I'm going off here now. But here's something you don't see. A lot of these theaters, when you're on the stage or you're back, back in the orchestra, it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful place. But all the actors and all the crew, as soon as they go off stage down in the basement or the dressing rooms, it's all basements. It's all, and here is Phantom of the Opera's wig room down in the basement. Wow. So it's like, you're just walking around, checking on doors. I open that door. I'm like, whoa, a lot of wigs here. Got to get it all, you know, shoot the whole thing. Amazing yeah. what goes on there, you know? And of course, you know, uh, all the productions, and then we've, we've talked about this, Matt, you know, the, the front of house, you know, the actors, the directors, they need the back room staff, the stage staff. Oh, yeah. Because they Amazing. can't fit without them. And these guys are funny, too. A lot of the prop guys during production, like there's a lot going on backstage. They'll be dancing, singing. They're having a good time with the, with the, with the play as well. And they're, and they're rigging everything. But I've seen some stuff go on, like the, one of the actors will come and he's doing something to the side and the prop guys will be like playing a beanbag toss game and toss him something. He'll, he'll participate. You know, this is all going on just, well, just to have a laugh, to keep things light, you know. It's amazing. It's great to be backstage. Do you love it? Yeah, it's fun. How, I mean, how long have you been doing it for? I started Halloween night on Beetlejuice. Mm. And um, at the Winter Garden, and those crowds, the screaming, I had never heard screaming like that. It reminded me of audio tape from a Beatles concert, just like unbelievable screaming. And that was my first night. And then there was a, there was a Halloween costume party. So everyone was already dressed up in character. And my job is to see everyone coming in the door and make sure they work there. I had no idea. I said, come on in. So... Uh, <laughs> You know, the crew guys are on the walkies going, hey, we got patrons on the deck. You know, they're walking right on stage before the show's coming. Hey, sorry, man, I thought they worked here, you know. <laughs> so it's tough till you, till you know like 100, 150 people, you know, mm. ushers, musicians, stage people. You know, you got to know them all. And they're all different. Mm, they are. Now, for me, Matt, there's one photograph that summarizes your book of the ghost light years, 2020. And it is the Lyceum Theatre. You know, because when I look at that picture, it's, for me, it's eerie, it's haunting. Um, yeah. And yes, of course, like a lot of the, um, the theatres, it's, it's rumored to be haunted, but, we have what looks like a color coordination of black, gold, and red. Isn't that stunning, everybody? And what I'm getting at here is the, the black, the red, the gold, and just the the ghost like on the stage for me, Matt, is it's got an air, it's got um an atmosphere behind it of a you know a shadowy, ghost likely, eerie effect. And I loved it. And I think you caught that very, very cleverly because this is what your book is about, the ghost light years. Talk to me Absolutely. about how well you described. took that shot. It's beautiful. Well it's described. Stunned. I think what's interesting about this is it's so bare bones because you can see behind the stage, you can see the, the, the straight back to the to the brick wall. And um, the Lyceum is interesting like that. You can see where the paint ends. And it's one of the only theaters where you can walk in the stage door 
on the street north of it. And if you walk straight through the theater, you walk right out to the next block. So it's like a straight line. And um, of course, that's lit by the ghost light alone. And it's, I think it's bare bones. You see the ladders. You do? See the ladders. So it's, it's, it's like you said, it's, it's powerful and it's a little scary. And it's, and it's historical, you know? You, you've got the three ladders there. You've got the yeah. black up to a certain height, and then it goes to the white. You know, we've only painted up so far what the audience can see. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, you've got the, the fire bag there. I think it's the fire bag. But it is that eerie light that captured this photograph for me, and that's what I like about yeah. this one. See, if you look straight back, that's the stage door back there. And the main entrance is on, on the other side. So it's no, no other theaters like that, front to back. Like, you can walk straight back. And it's a long walk, you know? I mean, I've got, of course, my, a lot of these scary theaters... Walk. They're very scary, yeah. But they've seen a lot of life over the, all the hundreds of years. But what do you... But what I, you know, when you beat to New York, all these theaters, they're... I think I'm right in saying this. They're just around the corner from each other, aren't they? And a lot of them are probably all owned by the same organizations. It's true. It's true. There's like 17 Schubert theaters right within a five block radius between 8th Avenue and, and, and Broadway, you know? How long did it take? That... How long did it take you to take all these photographs and put this together? Well, I was shooting them while I was working, and then I realized, boy, I'm getting a lot of them here. You know, let me try to get them all before before I don't have this chance again. So uh, I didn't realize that what I was compiling, and I said, all right, these are I have something here. So I called up and said, listen, I'm missing four four or five theaters. Can I go in there? Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy says, yeah, come pick up the keys. You know, we like your work because I was showing my, my work anyway. So mm -hmm. I was very uh, very lucky to to have that trust. You know, just in there for a few minutes, try not to be scared, <laughs> get the shots. Because it's, uh, you know what you want in there. You got to get the shot from the dead center back and the, and the opposite from the front. You know, maybe a few flanking shots and then look around for the details. You know, I had to edit out a few things, but uh, there's a lot. It's The history is amazing in there. Mm. You know? It is. And I... And for me, Matt, I've already said this, is, you know, your photographs capture the history and the essence of the place. And when I look at the, your pictures, you know, your photographs from the back of the stage, I can just see the actors walking around the stages, you know, the props prompting them to come on, the scenery changes. They bring so much to life, your photographs do. Yeah, there's a story there. You can just read it as you look at it and see yeah. what's going on in the wings. Those are the wings, you know. Yeah. Like, look at the look at what's going on the side here. There's the Have a look. staircase. That's the Lyceum there. But look at the sides there. Yeah. You see exits like the, you, nobody sees that. Nobody you sees know, so that. I have to show everything. I'm showing everything. You know. Yes. You know, even, if the, even if the stage itself gets diminished, I want to see, like, there's the whole theatre, you know. Yeah, and, of course, all the actors and all the um, back scene, they will, they'll come down those steps because their rooms will be upstairs, up there, you know, stage right, stage left, stage upper, stage centre, yeah. The audience doesn't the, see The automation them. guys, the, the, the fly guys, you, you hardly see them. They, they just go up and they keep going up and up and up. And that's like, like 60 feet. They're above everything. You know, they're running the motors, you know, doing all the changes in the, in the set. You know, they're just up there. And the spotlight guys, they're even higher. Mm. You know, very dangerous work up there, you know, mm. to hang the lights. You know, it's, it's amazing stuff. I got a lot of, uh, you know, behind the scenes when sets come in, I've got, I make books about that, you know, about bringing in all the rigs, the huge sets, you know, coming off the truck, I've got videos and stills. And I usually make a book at the end of the year, you know. Ah, oh, we might have more books, everybody. So, do you enjoy your work, Matt? Of course. I'm always a, I'm a photographer, you know. I see, I take, you know. Mm. So, 
you've you've produced you put this book out who would you like to you know to be looking at this book everybody a, a certain particular type of person who do you want to see buying your book i'm going to go with everybody <laughs> even uh students you know it's a great student book to say like wow this is there's a lot of old history there that we don't know about you know these buildings are old you know hundreds of years old some of them you know and um you know theater people like it people who like the theater musicals architecture photography so there's a big net out there of people who would enjoy this you know and it's a good size book it's a good coffee table book you know mm. it's heavy well i met up with my godson uh matt's um on Sunday, he's 30, he's an actor. And I was talking to him about your book and, you know, the the photographs of Broadway. And and he's, and he, he turned to me and said, well, that's my Christmas present from you is to get a copy of that book. Because I want <laughs> to see those photographs because my aim will eventually be to tread the boards of Broadway. Ah, it's a great so, thing. It's a great thing. We were chatting about it, and I was showing him the photographs of the um, what you sent over, and we were looking at your web page, and he was just looking at the photographs, and he just went, "Oh my goodness!" He said something That's else, but we have to. Well, I'll get you. Book. I'll send you one. <laughs> <laughs> so. Are you planning any more? Please say yes, because that's, it's just amazing work you do. Yes, yes. I'm always shooting. I just have to figure out, you know, what goes where, put it together, you know. I have a, a book that I'm working on now of photographs. I do a lot of street things, you know. So I've compiled a bunch of street things in there, and, you know, I do overlap a few you know, I do the, the New York City subways, you know. So I have these other books that are like uh, sitting in, on the bench, you know, that I need to get out there. When I do the behind the scenes books, you know, that was the music man. It's a big, thick book, you know. Lots of great pictures, you know. So I'm busy. I'm always busy. I'm always, you know, seeing what I shot the day before. Mm. Always thinking it's better than it is. <laughs> so as I said everybody go and have a look at uh, Matt Potosa's uh, book go to his webpage have a look at his work everybody this is the idea of the interview is to go and have a look at Matt Potosa's work go to his web pages um, if you want the book go there or click on Amazon but he's got other works there other photographs other things there this is what this interview is about it's about Matt Potosa more than say the book of photography. Um, Thank you. I just want to say, Matt, it's been a huge pleasure chatting to you over the last few weeks. And and looking at the book is truly inspiring. And the the cleverness, the brilliance of your photography is just blown me away. But it was the photograph from the auditorium at the Lyceum, everything stripped bare, the ghost light, the earring is there. That's the photo for me. Well, thank you, John. Thank you, John. And it's, uh, I think it's an original. There's no other book out, out there that has this kind of, you know, visual information in it. You know, I think it's a worthwhile book. So I just simply say, Matt Potosa, thank you so much for coming on my show. It's been a huge pleasure interviewing you and looking at your book. Matt Potosa, everybody. Thank you, John. I'm JT Crowley. Thanks for listening, watching wherever you're in the world. Until next time, stay safe. <laughs>